morning it is uh, beginning of april peak rhubarb season my favorite and so this morning i wanted to show you how to make rhubarb crumble you probably all know anyway but just in case you don't so this morning i've been out and picked some rhubarb and chopped it up into little pieces here is about 650 grams worth i'm making a crumble for about six of us hopefully with a bit of leftovers so i'm just going to pop the rhubarb in raw to my crumble dish just like that comes up about two-thirds of the way and put that to one side and sprinkle some sugar over it now this is to your taste i'm always trying to put less sugar in but you do need a fair bit with rhubarb that's ready for later now you want to make the crumble Now, for my recipe, I put in 200 grams of butter. That's four fifths of a pack if you haven't got any scales with you. In it goes, and I've diced it into about 1.5 uh, centimeters cubed squares. Nearly there. There we are, 200 grams. Doesn't eat it. Uh, next thing you're going to add is some flour and for that when I've got 200 grams of butter I'm going to put in 225 grams of flour. You could do one to one, doesn't really matter, um, but I'm going to put slightly more flour in than butter. notice I've used strong white flour there. I actually didn't mean to. Plain flour would be better. Strong flour is meant for bread making. It's got loads of gluten in. And actually it doesn't make any difference if you're making this. But um, we don't really grow strong flour in Britain. It tends to come from Canada or from Italy. So if you can use plain flour then you'll know it's British grown. And I tend to use Dove's, um, Dove's Farm because they're organic and I trust them and I think they're, I think they're terrific really. Okay, so you mix butter and flour together until they resemble breadcrumbs. Now that means rubbing it through your fingers like that. I've done quite a lot already. And you should end up with this nice crumbly, easy mixture at the end. When I do it with my children, they sort of squint it together like that, which is not what you're looking for. Yeah, it's really kind of fine and crumbly. Right. Next thing you want to add in is some sugar. And I'm going to use Dermo Rara and I'm going to use 150 grams. But again, this is to taste. So, or if you haven't got scales, it doesn't really matter. Just do it how you taste it. And in goes 150 grams. Because the children always try to knock me, so I spill some extra sugar in. That's just a quick one. You want a little shake of salt. Remember when you're cooking anything sweet, still put a little bit of salt in. There we go. And I'm going to put a little bit of ginger in. Just because I think they go really well together. Rhubarb and ginger. I'm not the first person to think that. Uh, I've got some rolled porridge oats here. I like the porridge ones because they're a little bit smaller. The big, the, um, special big jumbo ones I think are a bit chewy and I'm going to put 100 grams of these in there we go and again mix it all around a bit and the last addition I'm going to put in is some chopped walnuts and this is just how many you like really so I'm doing a handful, I'd imagine that's about 25, 30 grams. You could do all of this, including the walnuts, in a food processor and it would take a lot less time. Then you've got to wash up your food processor and well, whatever. This is great. 
great walnuts are so good for you. We've got uh, potassium, magnesium, calcium, uh, phosphorus, folate. They've been shown to help with depression, i.e. to alleviate depression. I'll just bring it on. Um, all together, fantastic for your health. So I try to stick them in places wherever I can. Also, we're largely vegetarian, so I'm always looking for vegetarian sources of protein, particularly for my teenage boys. Okay, in go the walnuts, and again, just mix it all around, and that's what you'll end up with. Lovely big bowl of mixture. Now the great thing about crumble mixture is that it freezes beautifully. So, if you make that amount, and that's quite a significant amount, and you've got, you think it's got to the right level on your crumble, then you just put what's left in the freezer, and you've got ready-made crumble mixture for another time. Yum. And then on my wonky jar, I don't know what's happened there, <laughs> I'm going to sprinkle a little bit more demerara on the top. Now that will go in the oven at around 180 degrees for about mm, half an hour to three quarters of an hour, depending on you know how thick your layers are and how big your dish is, how hot your oven is, that sort of thing. And another great thing about crumbles is that you can make them with anything you like. You can, uh, you can freestyle. So sometimes I put ground almonds in the top, sometimes chopped up hazelnuts, you might put apple underneath, strawberries, raspberries. If you grow your own you'll find you've got gluts of things at various times of year and a crumble is a perfect way particularly to get your grumpy teenage children to eat some really fantastic food. Enjoy it.